So first I've already made my loops. They're already done. They're ready to go. Um, sometimes I will put this on a clamp and sometimes I will have a contraption where I have like a ton of different hooks and all of that. But right now we are going to do it this way. I'm going to clamp this down. I'm only clamping the loop part and then the knot is right there where I had secured it. And then here's the rest. So, oh, excuse me. So anyway, I am going to start here and I'm going to start back combing. Now, I will tell you that whenever you're back combing on a lot of these different types of colors, uh, you want to be really careful, especially if they have like black in them or like a prominent color, because if you do that, you're going to end up with a one big giant clump of black. So whenever I do crazy colors like these, um, you'll, a lot of times you'll see them in twist or in braids, um, and things like that, unless it's meshed together better. Um, and that would be different, but because this isn't meshed together like that, which is what I wanted, um, you know, uh, you just got to be careful as far as when you're back homing, cause you'll get one color just kind of clumped together and you kind of want to steer clear from that. So anyway, so I've back combed a little bit, uh, not very much, but we're just going to keep this really, really simple. Okay. You're working with two pieces and you're going to put those pieces together, split down the middle and pull. When you pull all the way down, you're going to put this together again, split down the middle and pull. Okay. And with big, long pieces like this, you really don't want to start way down here because then you're going to end up with a big knot right here. You kind of want to start like somewhere in here doing that. But as you do it, just like when you're braiding something long, you got to pay attention down here, uh, at the end to make sure you're not coming up with a huge knot and a crazy mess. So anyway, so I'm going to put those together and pull. Put these together, pull. Put these together, pull. Put these together. See, I'm taking the middle, pull. And then you kind of want to. Now, it seems like I'm like taking this out as I go, but really I'm not. This is getting hard right here. Take these pieces, put them together, pull. Now with synthetic hair, it's a lot more uh, harder to um, manipulate, I guess you should say, with the twist and rip method because synthetic is a fiber and it's, it's extremely strong. Some are stronger than others. So, um, I'm trying to figure out how to explain it. Uh, human hair is a lot softer and it has more stretch and elasticity to it. So I'm literally doing the same thing that I showed y'all splitting down the middle, but it's getting harder to do because it, this hair is getting so tangled, which is what we want anyway. So now I'm not even coming down here. I'm kind of doing it at, and when you put it together, you're doing one twist. Now you see, and really you don't want to go too far down and start because then you're going to end up with like a huge hole. And as you go, you want to kind of smooth anything crazy down here out because you want your dreadlock to be symmetrical as much as possible in the 
circumference of it. You don't want like a huge knot and then another huge knot. I mean, even though we're not making it perfect, obviously you still want your dreadlock to be okay. <laughs> um, even on human hair, um, I will try to do one on human hair. I've actually been wanting someone to come in and get nothing but um, the twist and rip method um, with no crochet hook whatsoever. That is how I did mine uh, in the beginning, but this was years ago. Um, 2015 is when I started mine. Now I've got all kinds of stuff added and you wouldn't really be able to tell because there's a lot has been done between then and now. But also with the twist and rip method, you will see how the twist is really being shown. And I don't know really per se why they called it the twist and rip method because when you're really starting it, you're not like doing a huge twist. But when you're done, you will see there's kind of like a, a candy cane-ish to it. I don't know if you can see, but see the orange and then the caramel and the orange and then the caramel. You see how, and it's got like a twist to it. And that's from where I've put them together, ripped them apart, stacked them, pulled it apart. You get my drift. <laughs> now I'm jumbling up my words. And then just keeping going and keeping going and doing it at a steady pace. So now I have this huge, just, you know, this is the twist and rip method. Now I'm not going to leave it like this. Even with human hair, I would not leave it like this. But now you have all these little baby hairs, okay? Kind of like webs. You have all this fuzz, okay? Now, this fuzz, I always say fuzz is your friend. And this is real. I don't care what anybody says. It's true. Okay. Especially on human hair. Human hair. This is real. Fuzz is your friend. In the beginning. <laughs> um, you might not like it, but it is. Uh, so this web, I'm going to start to wrap. Now, when you do wrap this, you don't want to wrap a big clump. You want to wrap, make sure it's webbish. Even if it's a cut, you know, like three strands, as long as it's in a webbish type of form. And as you go down, continue to pick up a little bit more of a web. And you want to try to continue that. This is going to give you the effect like the crochet method when you're taking the crochet and or when you're taking the crochet hook and you're taking that hook and you're trying to create a web around the mass of hair that is what this is doing but it's not in a perfectly I mean even then it's not perfect but this is what they did back then um, when you run out of hair, stop what you're doing, grab a few more strands. The less you have, the better. Um, just a few. And you don't have to just go down. You can kind of go over. You can do whatever you, because we're going to go back. And we're probably going to just go back to whatever we found that might need to be tweaked. And we're not going to use a crochet hook. We are going to take whatever little baby hairs we can find and figure it out. That's what we're going to do. 
Now, do I put these in boiling? Um, do I put these in hot water after it has been boiled and taken off the stove? Um, yes, I do. I will do that. And will I use a crochet hook then? No. If I need anything tweaked or anything like that, I will continue to try to pull out a little baby hair or something and do the same thing. Now, when you get down to the end here, um, you're going to kind of just, just keep going until you just can't go no more. And then you're going to kind of do a little twist and rip, little miniature twist and rip. as far down as you want to go. Now with the twist and rip method, I will say, when you get down to the end, um, it's a little different because when you do use a crochet hook, you have the option of having that pretty flow of hair because it's not so tangled. Now with this method, it's a little bit different. Now, if you wanted to go back and crochet in some free flowing hair or whatever you want to do for the wispy ends, you can do that. But then again, you will run into the issue of the differential of where it was not used of a crochet hook compared to the twist and rip because even in synthetics doing a twist and rip method even when you put it in the hot water regardless if it was twist and rip or sin or a crochet hook method crochet hook method still is going to be tighter than this this is why a lot of people use the crochet hook method because it speeds up the locking process on real human hair. So um, this will be a lot floppier compared to one that was used with a crochet hook. But when I stick this in hot water, which I didn't go back and tweak anything, but when I stick this in hot water, any of those little pieces of whatever is sticking out is going to mold because this is heat sensitive, it um, heat activated uh, hair. So that is how you can secure the ends on braids and things like that. Um, when you're doing box braids or anything like that, you don't use a rubber band. Um, you stick the ends in hot water. Um, also you always want to use apple cider vinegar, um, on any kind of synthetics whatsoever to strip any alkaline off of it. And also you want to put them in, uh, apple cider vinegar and then, some hot water um, to rinse that apple cider vinegar off and uh, on top of that to um, unstiffen a lot of these synthetics will be extremely stiff when you get them i mean you get them on amazon and things like that i mean a lot of times you'll get them in a bag and they're like er, you know bent in half um and they like stay that way so if you put them in hot water you boil it, you take it off the stove, let it sit for a second, put them in with, with some forks or whatever you got to do, and then pull them out and have a towel right there on the floor ready. That's what I do because it will get on the floor. The water will. You can hang them on a hanger over the sink. If you got some cabinets up there, whatever you got to do, let them hang, let them cool and they should be a little bit more, you know. But anyway, here's the job.